Good afternoon, everyone. In today's video, we're going to be building our very own extreme tick counter reading indicator. Now, the whole idea behind this is to measure the plus 1,000 and minus 1,000 tick readings every single day, and this counter needs to reset to zero every day as well. So this gives us a snapshot of what happened in that particular moment. Now, for those of you wondering why is this useful, the answer is quite simple and fairly obvious. We're trying to answer the question, is there more extreme buying or selling pressure? For example, if we see a lot of plus 1,000 tick readings, then we know that we're more on the buying side versus if we saw a bunch of minus 1,000 tick readings, then we know that there's a lot more selling pressure. Now, for those of you that are trying to figure out an alternative to this, to me, the alternative was always manually counting the plus 1,000 and minus 1,000 tick reading text messages that we would get. For those of you that haven't already set up these texts, here's a tutorial video uh, which we created which walks through how to do exactly that. You can create text alerts for the extreme tick readings, but the drawback of this is it's a fairly manual process to go back and count, is this more than 1,000, is this less than 1,000? And that's kind of hard to do, especially when the market's moving fairly rapidly. For those of you that did set up these text messages, what you may have noticed is you should have received a lot of texts over the past two, maybe three weeks as this volatility is picked up. And I would argue that we've seen more plus and minus 1,000 tick readings in the past three weeks than we've seen in all of 2021 combined. Now that of course may be a bit of an exaggeration, it's just completely anecdotal, but we've had a lot of massive tick readings and we've also had plenty of days in which we started with say minus 1000 tick readings back to back to back and suddenly as the day progresses in the second half we're starting to see a ramp up of plus 1000 readings. So the goal here is let's count this every single day and get an accurate measure of was there more selling or buying pressure for this particular day. Now let's get started with moving on to our thinkorswim charts and writing some code. Now inside of your thinkorswim charts, click the studies icon and then click create to start building this indicator. We can give this a name, TI tick, whoops, tick reading counter. And the vision that I have at least for this indicator is that it's one that's not always going to live on our charts. Whenever we're curious around what's happening, we can essentially pull it off and very easily plug this indicator onto our charts and get a gauge of what is that plus and minus 1000 tick reading for both sides. Now let's start by first defining that new day variable. This should be familiar for those of you that watch the cumulative tick indicator tutorial. The idea here is we need to essentially have some sort of a divider for each new day, which allows us to reset the counter to zero. So we can start by saying something like def new day is equal to get day is not equal to uh, the previous day, for example. So we'll say the previous day here. So just as a high level, we're defining a new day where we're using the get day function. This is built inside of thinkorswim. And we're saying is today not equal to yesterday. If this is the case, then we know it's a brand new day. Now, once we have that, we can start defining our tick readings, both on the negative and the positive extreme side. So let's start with the negative first. So we'll say def negative tick readings. And here we can say something like if our low and the symbol that we'd like that low value for is the tick symbol is less than or equal to minus 1000, then set this to equal one, else set this to equal zero. So just to, again, recap what we did here, we created a new variable called negative tick readings, where we're capturing the low of each candle, in this case, the one minute candle, we can see that with the time frame right here. And we're using the symbol T-I-C-K, this is the N-Y-S-E tick, as that value for which we'd like the low of. If that low value is less than or equal to the negative 1000, we're setting this variable to equal one, otherwise we're going to set this variable to equal zero. Now, for those of you that have seen some of our previous tutorials, this should start to give you the clue that by having this equal one, we can then eventually take the sum of all of the negative tick readings to get a gauge of the total count of minus 1000 tick readings. Before we do that, let's define the positive ticks as well. So I can copy paste that in and I'll change the negative here to be positive tick readings. Our low value instead, we need to change this to the high value. Same thing, symbol is equal to tick except this time we'd like to see if we're greater than or equal to positive 1000. Same thing, if that's true, then we can set this equal to one, otherwise we set this equal to zero. 
So as of right now, we have our new day variable defined. We have our positive and negative tick reading values defined, where we're measuring that minus and plus 1,000 ticks. Now we need to build the actual counter variables. Now to define our counter variable, we can start by saying something like def negative counter is equal to, and here we have a few different conditions. So for example, if it's a new day, then set this counter to zero since we'd like to refresh the counter every single day. So that's one. However, if it's not a new day, then we can say else if we have a negative minus 1000 tick reading, then take that same counter variable from the previous bar and we're going to add one to it, meaning we're going to increment it by one since we now have a negative 1000 tick reading. And if this is not true, then simply return what the value was on the previous candle and we're going to carry that forward so we keep that counter intact. Now we repeat the same thing for our positive side so I can in fact copy paste this one more time and say this time our positive counter variable same thing if it's a new day then reset this to zero otherwise if we have positive tick readings then take the positive counter on the previous variable or the previous candle excuse me and increment that by one otherwise carry forward our positive counter variable as is since this was a candle that had neither a minus or a plus 1000 tick reading. Now to output this in the form of a label, we can use the add label function, which if you're unfamiliar with how to use this, we have a tutorial that goes deep down into the add label function. But on the high level, it takes three different parameters. The first is when do you want to see this label plot? So in our case, we'd like to see it plot all the time, anytime we load in this indicator. So I'll say yes there. Now, in terms of what we'd like to see in the actual label, that's where I can say uh, positive tick, or actually we'll say um, plus 1000 tick. And there we can say plus uh, positive counter, and I'll give this the color green. And now we repeat this one more time for our negative side. So same thing, we always want this label to be true, but here I'll say minus 1000 tick plus negative counter and this time we'll set this label to the color red now let's click ok and see how this turns out to begin with and i'm on a chart of the uh, spy here the spy etf so i'll click ok now so far we can see minus 1000 tick we have three of those today we had minus 1000 ticks five times today now i think this minus 1000 is just a little messy so let me change that real quick just to make this slightly cleaner so i'll just change this to something like positive tick negative tick and uh, for those of you that watch this tutorial you'll have an idea that this is measuring that minus and plus 1000. all right so that looks much cleaner now we can see essentially today we had plus 1000 tick readings three times but minus 1000 tick readings five times so there's definitely more selling pressure today in comparison to buying pressure that's pretty much it. That's all I was trying to answer with this indicator. And this is something that you can add on to your charts whenever you need uh, as the day progresses. Now, keep in mind one little nuance here is as you change time frames here. So let's say you go from a one minute instead to something like a five minute time frame chart. You'll see the values change. And the reason that changes is because the five minute candle will only measure that plus or minus 1000 tick reading only one time in that five minute span. So on a one minute chart, you get a little bit more uh, narrowed down, focus, zoomed in view on this tick reading. But on something like a five minute, or even if you went to something like a 15 minute chart, you'll see those values change since each candle will only count as one different occurrence of that plus or minus uh, extreme tick reading. All right, hopefully this tutorial was helpful for those of you that are equally curious around if there's more buying or selling pressure each day. And for those of you that have set up those text alerts, Hopefully this gives you a way to try and now actually keep a count every single day instead of needing to be bombarded with these texts and then go in and manually see what actually ended up happening. All right, take care everyone, good luck trading, and we'll see you in the next update.